Good morning, welcome to our daily psalm. Today we're reading through Psalm 127, Psalm 127. And psalm 127 is a, is a strange little psalm. It has no lead in or lead out. Um, it just starts and then diverts halfway through very suddenly to a different subject and then just stops. It reads a bit more like something from the wisdom sayings in the book of Proverbs. And there may well be a link uh, between Psalm 127 and Proverbs because uh, Psalm 127 is ascribed to Solomon. You'll see it there in the title. And Solomon was the composer, of course, of many of the verses in Proverbs. It's also possible, too, that there's a, a hidden reference to Solomon at the end of verse 2. You might see there the, the Hebrew word translated beloved, to whom sleep is given by God. Well, that word beloved in the Hebrew um, is the word from which God's personal name for Solomon, Jedidiah, is formed, is derived. Well, whether the link is there or not with, with Solomon and Proverbs, let's have a, a read through Psalm 127 and uh, see what wisdom we may derive from its verses. Uh, verses one and verse one uh, refers to two activities, to human activities, to house building and to keeping watch over a city, presumably from its walls. Um, and a scenario which would fit well uh, for those two activities comes from the days, you may recall, when Nehemiah was commissioned to uh, return to Jerusalem and rebuild it ahead of the Israelites um, coming back from their period of exile. And Nehemiah's first job was to reconstruct the city wall, which was uh, in a state of ruin, and to then post guards around it. And only then... Um, could the people who had been living in tents inside the wall um, turn their energies towards uh, building homes for themselves? Let's have a read of verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards keep watch in vain. Well, whether or not uh, rebuilding uh, Jerusalem under Nehemiah is in mind, uh, Psalm 127 picks as examples of any human activity, picks two really important ones, two activities which are in themselves totally absorbing. They demand full attention. You cannot casually build a house. You cannot casually guard a city. They both House building and keeping watch are important jobs. They, um, it's vital they're done well. You pour everything of yourself into it. But Psalm 127 there says there are two ways to engage in such activity, and by implication all human activity. You either do it with God's involvement and depending so hard on God that it's done in his strength and under his direction and not yours, or... Well, it's pointless. That's what the psalm says. Oh yes, of course you can still build a house without God and you can keep watch over a city without God, but without God such activity is meaningless. It lacks that vital element which gives it meaning and life and purpose and direction. Verse 2 goes on to amplify the point. It is in vain that you hasten to rise up early and go so late to rest, eating the bread of toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. Now, if you read verse 2 wrong, you can end up feeling very guilty if you're not a very good sleeper at night, even though you've done a decent day's work, uh, because it almost implies that if you have done a good day's work, God will help you to sleep well. That's not what the psalm is saying at all. Actually, he's saying you can be a workaholic and you can check your phone for texts and emails before you've even gotten yourself out of bed and then toil through the day without a break and run yet another 18-hour day and then collapse back into bed at the end of the day, but your life actually will be a waste. What Psalm 127 doesn't say is that you shouldn't work. 
It doesn't say that you don't need to do anything because you can actually you can leave it all to God. What Psalm 127 does say is that frantic effort, frantic work alone, driven work in that sense, will lead you nowhere. And the last line of verse 2 tells us that life is best lived when we are God's beloved and resting on him. So when we go to sleep, of course, that is precisely when we stop all our doing and we depend completely on God's watch over us for those hours when we're unconscious. So these are verses which say all this human activity only really has meaning if it's done in God's company as though God himself is doing it. Well, the second half um, of uh, the psalm, verses 3 to 5, uh, switches to a, another of the great preoccupations of uh, Middle Eastern life at the time, family. Here's verses 3 to 5. Now, sons are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the sons of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they dispute with their enemies in their gate. Well, yes, um, verse 3 really does refer to sons rather than daughters. There are modern translations that try to make it um, gender non-specific, but it, it does specific reference to sons rather than daughters, and it's not a pejorative statement against daughters, nothing wrong with daughters at all. Um, the picture here is rather that when those sons grow up, there will be a household of hefty young men who will make scam merchants and thieves think twice when they come calling on the ageing dad. Which is, that's the scenario which is, is going on when we get to the end of verse 5. Uh, though I have to say one commentator Riley predicts that a bevy of sons are likely to be a handful before they are a quiver full. And uh, I think all of us who've had sons would agree with that. What we mustn't miss is that the scenario of verses 3 to 5 is driven by verse 3's insistence on God's active involvement, as it was in verses 1 and 2. Sons are a heritage. Well, that's a common statement and common thought in ancient Middle Eastern families, full stop. But verse 3's point is that sons are a heritage from the Lord, and their conception in their mother's womb is a gift from the Lord. It is God who is the giver, the source of what will become and be the security in family life. The implication from verses 1 and 2, backed up by 3 to 5, is that with God unacknowledged, family life, the heart of life in the community, well, the community culture of that day and today, is lived utterly in vain. So here's the wisdom of Psalm 127. Seek the Lord's giving and watching and providing and resourcing in the whole of your living for any activity devoid of him is worthless. So take a moment to pray. O oh Lord, we thank you and bless you that you are the builder and the watcher and the keeper and the giver, the protector. You are the source of life and life has no True meaning unless it is lived that way, unless we acknowledge you and invite you in and ask if we can do life with you. So we pray that you will be in our building of homes, of cities, the work that we engage in, of families, of our local community, our church. Lord, may it be you who builds it, even though ours may be the, the hands, our minds, the brains that you use to come up with the plans. Be front and centre of it, be core 
to everything and key to everything we do so that what we do will honour you and be blessed by you and for the sake of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.